State Representative Brooks Langrath stopped by our studio today. We talked to him. Let's go ahead and play that. I'm in studio right now with our state representative, Brooks Landgraf. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a crazy weekend. Can you share a little bit about when you first heard the news? Well, I was actually in, in Houston uh, yesterday afternoon uh, at a wedding and got news and, and uh, just left the wedding and immediately uh, got back here uh, home to Odessa in West Texas as fast as I could. Uh, it's obviously a tragic situation. I, I personally know some of the victims. Um, but this is a very strong place. Anybody who lives here in West Texas or has made a living here in West Texas knows that this desert is not an easy place to live. It takes a special kind of person to live here. Uh, it takes a special and a very strong kind of person to make it here. And I think that we're seeing that strength and that resiliency already on full display here in Odessa and Midland. Uh, uh, because no cowardly act from uh, from from somebody uh, like who would uh, who would uh, do this damage to this region, it, that cowardice is no match for the resolve and the strength of the people of West Texas, and and we're seeing that, and uh, and this is certainly a tragic situation, but um, uh, and and I, sh I I share the pain of of the people who have lost loved ones, and, and I'm going to do everything that I can to help the recovery of those who have survived. Uh, but seeing the communities come together uh, with that strength and resiliency, I think, is, is uh, also something that we can't forget. Absolutely. We've seen a lot of community members coming forward. Um, but I'm curious to know, what is the conversation that's happening between you, the governor, and the speaker? What's mm -hmm. going on right now? Well, I, I do want to say that uh, as soon as uh, word of, of this news broke yesterday, I was on the phone with the governor's office, with the Speaker of the House, uh, and uh, with the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, everybody has been uh, very helpful, very sensitive to what's going on out here. Uh, the governor's going to be here in just a few minutes uh, and we are anyway they have made the resources of the state uh, fully available to us and uh, and we're certainly going to utilize that to get the help to the people who need it the most here in the Permian Basin and uh, but I can't thank them enough for being involved and what time is the governor arriving is he going to be here for the noon uh, press conference yes he is he's in route right now I just uh, spoke with uh, with somebody from his office uh, before I got here to the to the station and uh, so he, he is on his way here right now and kind of a question that I think is on a lot of people's minds, it's September 1st, we mm -hmm. saw a lot of new laws go in, mm -hmm. into effect, especially some gun laws, um, being able to carry it after a natural disaster or state right. of emergency, and then also bringing it into worship mm -hmm. services, um, as long as there's written stipulation, and then mm -hmm. also we're seeing, you know, brass knuckles and things that are being mm -hmm. able to carry around. Um, what is your thoughts on that with something like this happening in West Texas, and how are lawmakers going to respond? Sure, well, uh, as far as the new laws that take effect today, on it just happened to be that September 1st is the is the first day of the fiscal year for the state, and that's when most new laws that were passed during the legislative session take effect. Uh, but most of the ones that are related to firearms are uh, very specific as to time, place, and manner. Uh, so, you know, they're really unrelated to the tragedy that ha that happened here uh, in Midland and Odessa yesterday. Uh, uh, so. They are, uh, again, time, place, and manner uh, specific and, and don't really have anything to do with a mass shooting like we saw yesterday. So how do lawmakers tackle issues like this, you know, trying to explain it to the public as well mm -hmm. and making it clear? Well, you know, clearly <clears throat> we do have a, a problem with gun violence, uh, not only in Texas, but across the country. And uh, there we do need to have solutions to help reduce uh, gun violence. Now, how, you know, what, what the best way to do that is, is of course, uh, going to be a conversation that has to take place. The legislature won't be in session again until 2021. Uh, so, uh, you know, we do have time to figure that out. Of course, it can be controversial. Some people are saying that we need to have constitutional carry. Other people are, are asking for, for gun control. Uh, you know, I, I think that it is a complicated issue and we're, we're going to have to uh, do something before the next legislative session again in 2021 to, uh, to help address this. But, but gun violence is a scourge and, uh, and I think it's going to be uh, something that our our constituents are going to want us to address. Do you think there should be a special session to tackle these topics? Uh, you know, the, uh, an important thing to note about this, uh, a special session uh, is that it's limited it, in nature, so we do need to have some consensus about w what to do to move forward uh, before we do that. Uh, and, and so I think if, if we can find out a way to address uh, gun violence while protecting the rights of law-abiding Texans, uh, you know, if, if we can coalesce around some sort of solution, then I think that would be appropriate. Of course, that's up to the, uh, to the governor to make that call. Um, but 
uh, but I, I think that's kind of where uh, most colleagues that I've spoken with, I, I think everybody's kind of in that, uh, in that same mindset right now. Mm -hmm. And any other specific resources that the governor is providing right now during this time? <clears throat> oh, well, the, the full uh, force of the Texas Department of Public Safety uh, is, uh, is available to us uh, here right now. And of course, uh, that's, you know, in the midst of one of their own being injured, uh, actually being the, first, uh, being the first person to be shot yesterday. And so, uh, you know, my heart goes out to DPS and all of our first responders, who, by the way, are the heroes. Uh, if, if it weren't, uh, if not for the bravery of uh, the Midland Police Department and the Odessa Police Department and DPS, uh, things could have been much worse yesterday. So I, I appreciate uh, our law enforcement officers for putting it all out on the line uh, and sacrificing so much to keep our community safe. And there's this sense, too, that people are just going to the movies or even we saw in El Paso just mm -hmm. four weeks ago, people are just going to Walmart. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this safety and the sense of safety that has mm -hmm. been uh, damaged by these active shootings and all the mass casualties that are occurring. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of message do you have for people out there that might feel uncomfortable just going to the movies again or mm -hmm. even going to Home Depot? Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think there. Uh, I think that goes back to the strength issue. I mean, it's. I, I understand if people are going to be a little bit reluctant to go out in public uh, after something like this, because again, uh, you, you know, the victims were innocent people, and uh, you know, who are just going about their their business and their daily lives, and and you know, we don't. Uh, we want people to be able to feel safe in their own in their own communities, uh, it, but I think that is it is going to take some time to heal. There is going to be a healing process associated with uh, w with this tragedy, and uh, but I, I uh, and people are going to do that on their on their own timelines. But I think what we are going to see again in the in the days, weeks, months, and years after this tragedy is how we all came together um, as neighbors, as as a community, uh, to help each other in our time of grief. And last question too, um, what message do you have for West Texans out there? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I've been, uh, I, I've been praying for our first responders, praying for uh, the families of those who have been lost and praying for the survivors who are, uh, who are already on their way to recovery. Uh, you know, there are other, uh, I think uh, hopefully this afternoon we'll have an idea of some other specific um, actions that can be taken by members of the community to, ha to help. Uh, there's already been an overwhelming uh, outpouring of support in terms of uh, making sure that first responders have meals to eat, uh, making sure that uh, survivors have bl uh, any needed blood. Uh, you know, our hospitals are all um, uh, up to date on on that and, and are well supplied, uh, but there will be other opportunities for everybody to help and pitch in. Thank you. And and is there anything else that I missed? Anything at all? I, I can't think of it. Well, thank you so much for being here, and we really appreciate it. My pleasure.